Imagine if George Lucas directed Lord of the Rings. I bought the rights to everything. Imagine the lack of location shooting. We can put Jar Jar in it. Imagine the dependency on computers and the lack of innovation. Blue screen. And thank heavens that didn't happen. Well, when I first read the books, I mean, I respect Tolkien as a writer, but I didn't really think he captured Lord of the Rings the way I would have. We thought that when you're making a movie on the scale of Lord of the Rings, the first step to take is to keep as untrue to the novels as possible. So we bought a room, I met with George, and after a long time, we finally agreed that displeasing fans is the way to go. To contradict Token would be risky, but overall, I, I think the best route that we could have taken. So I sat down to start this, I got a big, kind of a room of the fireplace, and I wrote Frodo, when I realized, we don't need a script. I mean, 20, 30 years ago, you needed a script, as well as actors and props and all that kind of stuff, but this is the digital age. We have computers and computers and electricity and money. We don't need a script. So we threw the idea right out the window. So Frodo, our, our hobbit hero, uh, I decided he should be about nine years old. And I think Frodo is kind of a gritty, uh, suburban nine-year-old. And I thought that would give him leeway to mature throughout the three films, even though everyone else would stay the same age. So you know what I know, we cast Jake Lloyd. Jake brings Frodo to life with a presence I've never seen in an actor. My mom told, uh, called me, and she said, George called again, and he said, I get to use a sword, and that's what I wanted to do the last time, is use a lightsaber. And I get to race again, I don't know what, but my sister Haley said, if you can be Darth Vader, you can be a hobbit. So, Legolas will be played by Hayden Christensen. He struck gold in episode two, and he's gonna make lightning strike in Lord of the Rings. Watch out, world, Hayden's coming to town. I mean, if you look into those eyes, there's so much mm, going on there, you know? I got a call from George, and <laughs> he said, Hayden, I need you, and I said, what? And he said, I need you to play Legolas in Lord of the Rings, and I said, okay, George, <laughs> that's who you want. So we got all the best guys. I got some guy named uh, Viggo Mortensen to play Aragorn. Uh, my friend Francis Ford Coppola suggested I use Marlon Brando as Gimli. I said, whatever. Uh, R2 and 3PO are playing Merry and Pippin. Let's see. Oh, Gandalf will be entirely uh, computer generated. Because I, I think Gandalf needs to be limitless. Kind of a free character. And anyone else we don't cast will be Jar Jar. I don't use locations, I have computers. So George creates this surreal blue screen world for his actors. Hello! Uh, action. And originally for the Star Wars I was involved in, the real ones, we attempted to do as little shooting as possible. We eliminate the props factor, the sets, the actors if it's cost effective. You know, all those things that are just so important for the schedule we're trying to keep to here. I've never seen anyone direct quite like George. He's in there getting elements. You know, the blue screen element, the green screen element. He dresses actors in green or blue chroma costumes to get their element. You know, every element that he has inside his giant head. I mean, he really puts a lot of thought into it. I pay very close attention to the intricacies. The real, the real. We manage the money, we manage the finances, we manage the economics of Lord of the Rings. Or whatever George wants. I saw the original trilogy, you know, I, I've been a big fan for years. And so I've always dreamed of working with George Lucas. But now that I'm here, and the blue screens are just so overwhelming, I haven't even been on set yet. They made me dress in a blue costume, in a blue room. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. 
George wasn't even directing, he wasn't even there. Christopher Lee was playing Saruman, and he was the only other sane person on set. I've been in a lot of movies, oh, hundreds. I thought it would be a wonderful experience to work on several movies directed by George Lucas, especially Lord of the Rings, which I've loved for such a long time. But the man is very peculiar. I I've only met him twice, he's not very supportive. The other day they dipped me in blue paint nude, said they'd fix it at the computer. It's a very interesting way to make a film. Certainly not a good way. I love George. Oh, I think he's great. Oh, he's a genius and rich. He's my new dad. I hate his guts. I love that man. Well, it's tough to really talk about post-production, because I guess there never really was a pre. We were always very conscious of post-production costs and money, but the facilities we have at ILM and Skywalker Ranch really allow us to kind of, you know, do whatever we want to do. We want Jar Jar, Jar Jar's there, and that's so important for the schedule and money. I have such a wonderful imagination since, you know, the heyday of filmmaking. So I thought, with this new technology, we don't have to do all plot, we can have a little bit of fun too. So because Lord of the Rings is so dark and sometimes can get very serious, I decided that during the Battle of Helm's Deep, there should be a shot of a banana slapping itself in the face. When, when George introduced us to the Banana Project, or what we've nicknamed Project Dole, <laughs> it forced us to take it to the next level. We presented a test to George, and that allowed us to say, okay, what are our limitations? Where can we go with this? So we all took out a banana, and we smacked it, and smacked our faces, scanned that in, manipulated it, turned it, rendered it, and that's when we could go back, add in the eye gestures, and the bruises. That's what mattered to us. Just those little things that make all the difference, and I thought it came out great on screen. I'm the kind of director who likes to really turn things around, mix them up, give the audience something they can kind of play with and turn around on and, and really just kind of hold and, you know, just do a lot of stuff like that. What's the man talking about? It was just so wonderful. <laughs> I'm just so privileged to have brought my expertise of eyes to this project. I mean, George really has those eyes, you know? Of a really dedicated, passionate retina. I don't mean to insult, but there's no need for this silliness. The man once was a filmmaker, but lost his abilities a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. He takes films that mean a lot to fans and people from the era and turn them into experiments for revolutionary recognition, and there's no need. The puppets would certainly suffice. This computer stuff is awfully stupid looking. I'm so happy I was given this project. I just love Token and the money I've made off of him. I think I'll really release a box set and sell it for way too much and not let people know that it would be cheaper to buy each individually. <laughs> That'd be pretty fun. This interview done? Alright, let's go make some money. Some sweet green.